Now we're going to learn about something called the work energy theorem. I think the word theorem just means that some physicist wanted to pretend he or she is a mathematician. Uh, this is not too much of a theorem, but so much as a, a simple calculation. We're going to consider a case where there is work being done on an object by a force and displacing the object along the horizontal direction here. So imagine that we move the object by a distance delta x1, and at that time the force on the object, the net force, is force F1. And we're going to imagine the case now where the force is not a constant, but is changing over time. So that just means that I'm pushing with greater and greater force, or I'm pushing with lesser and lesser force, or it's changing up as I get tired and get some energy back again, or what have you. But we're going to talk about a case where the force is not constant for each increment of displacement that the mass is being pushed through. In this case, we have to compute a slightly more complicated value for the work because we know that force is equal to excuse me, the work is done uh, by a net force dotted into a displacement, but we're going to have to sum up lots of contributions. In other words, we'll imagine a case where the work is the sum over a lot of little steps i of a little incremental piece of work, a force sub i dotted into a delta x sub i. Now, as one takes smaller and smaller steps and adds uh, lots and lots of terms to this sum, this looks like an integral, and we're in fact integrating this function called force, which may vary over the, the location x of the object, times a displacement delta x or dx. If one computes this integral, I'm going to omit the vectors for just a moment, assuming this is a one-dimensional problem, then this is an, inter an integral between some in initial location x sub i and some final location x sub f of this function f times dx. Well, f is nothing other than mass times acceleration by Newton's second law. So we have to insert what f is. It's ma times this quantity dx inside the integral. a is related to x. It's the derivative of velocity with respect to time, so it's dv dt. But like a, any good physicist, we can treat derivatives like fractions. And I'm going to simply move the dt that's in the denominator of that derivative over underneath the dx. And if I do that, then I have m times a dv times a dx dt. Now I'm not really integrating over x or dx anymore. I'm integrating over dv, and so I'm changing my limits of integration from the initial location and the final location to the initial speed and the final speed. And this thing called dx dt is nothing other than velocity. So what am I integrating? I'm integrating mass times velocity d, d velocity. And we know how to do that integral. The integral of a simple first-order polynomial is a second-order polynomial. And if I evaluate it at the limits of integration, that equals work is equal to 1 half times the final velocity squared times mass minus 1 half times the mass times the initial velocity squared. So this is a, a, a result that allows us to compute the work done on an object when the complicated case of the force is changing constantly over the the path of, or the motion of the object. And we don't even have to know anything about that complicated path. In other words, we didn't have to do this complicated looking sum over here that we started out with because now we can just insert what is our speed at the beginning and what is our speed at the end. And this is what's known as the work energy theorem. Work is related to the change in kinetic energy. Its work is equal to delta k or k final minus k initial. If the final kinetic energy is larger than the initial kinetic energy, then positive work is done. If the final kinetic energy is less than the initial kinetic energy, then negative work is done. If the final kinetic energy equals the kinetic, initial kinetic energy, in other words, it's moving at the same speed all the way throughout, then zero work is done. So our expression for in the work energy theorem, work equals delta k, helps uh, remind us of an earlier observation that we had, that if the work is positive, then we said that the final speed would be greater than the initial speed. And that's exactly, in, com, that's exactly compatible with the work energy theorem because if work is positive, that means delta k is greater than zero. Or in other words, we're adding kinetic energy or we're adding speed. If work is negative, then delta k has to be negative and the velocity at the end has to be less than the velocity at the beginning. If we think back to forces, then having a net force in the direction of motion tends to increase kinetic energy. Having a net force against the direction of motion tends to decrease kinetic energy.